Yeah, we're just going to be doing a, a brief overview of the new NX Sketcher interface. And um, during that, we'll be uh, learning to enable and disable the new NX Sketcher, um, just exploring the general new interface of the new NX Sketcher and um, demonstrating some of the new NX Sketch features. Uh, so that being said, um, so again, to enable and disable the new NX Sketch, this is done in your early access features. And we're going to hop right into NX and do this, but um, I just want to show you, depending on what kind of, uh, what version of NX you have, uh, this setting may be worded slightly differently. So um, it'll be somewhere towards the bottom of your early access features here, uh, asking you whether you want to turn on or off the new or old uh, sketcher. So that being said, let's just jump right over to NX. Uh, so Again, if you go over to your file uh, utilities and early access feature, um, regardless of what version you have, you should be able to come down here and uh, it'll give you the option to toggle on and off the uh, new user interface for sketching. And uh, this sketcher um, is the default setting uh, from versions 1953 onward. And um, again, you can turn this on and off, but you'll just have to go ahead and restart your NX for it to take effect. Um, it is recommended for a company to choose one environment over the other to be their standard, uh, especially if sharing uh, part file data. Uh, as an older version sketch can be converted to the new sketches, but you cannot go back. Uh, and once a part has created new sketches, the part file is forced to remain in the, new, in the new sketch mode permanently. So if users individually control what environment they prefer, uh, and they also share part file data, uh, the part file will dictate what environment must be used regardless of which is enabled in the session. So it is good uh, for users who prefer the older environment to understand that and know that um, as the new sketch format um, may be uh, forced on them uh, in given files in the future. And moving forward, uh, this will be the definitive sketch format for NX. Um, so let's just open a new part. So I already have a part opened here. And uh, the first thing you may notice with regards to sketch, uh, depending on what version you come from, there is no longer a uh, sketch or sketch in task environment. There's just one flat out sketcher. Uh, so I'm just going to come up here and hit sketch. And we get this create sketch dialog box. And uh, if you come over here under sketch plane, um, again, depending on what version you're coming from, uh, we have something which may be new to you, which is uh, show principal planes. And if you've used Creo or SolidWorks before, this is very similar to that. The planes look almost identical. Uh, so if we uncheck that box, uh, we, we make them disappear and you can see we're back to the original coordinate system. And if I select them again, we get the new planes. And if I hover over them, I can select them just as I can select the original coordinate planes. Uh, you can also take a look at orientation. You would use this when you're trying to create a sketch onto an existing part or object, uh, and you can manually select what you want your horizontal reference and origin point of the sketch to be. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start, start sketch on this plane here. Uh, if you notice, we just have a very clean sketch area. You have these uh, infinitely long lines now uh, that represent your X and Y sketching thesis. Uh, previous versions, you just had the X and the Y coordinate system at the center of your screen. And uh, these are really nice if you want to just be able to very easily grab onto um, one of your axes uh, to start a particular curve. Um, uh, compared to the classic sketch, the commands within the ribbon bar groups up here, such as uh, sketch, curve, uh, and edit, are for the most part identical. Um, there are a few uh, operation commands, um, maybe like some here in the curve creation group, um, with like offset pattern mirror, uh, which still function the same, but some of them may contain new toggles within their settings. Um, 
just for extra control over the command. Uh, the majority of these functions and how curves are created and applied are the same. So uh, these editing tools, trim, extend, corner, are exactly the same. Uh, so this is not a complete redo of the, the functions uh, and the features in the ribbon bar. Um, other than some other than some reorganization, uh, the functions themselves perform the same as the classic sketch. Uh, really, if anything, the new commands are up here in the solve group in the top right. And one of the main characteristics of the new sketch are um, these functions within the solve group. Uh, so this group of commands are uh, mainly toggles and options to control the behaviors of sketch objects as a sketch is developed. Uh, so toggles to display uh, symbols of information uh, to identify what's complete or incomplete. We have some relax functions, which are used to uh, free objects um, in, from dimensions or relations on the fly. Um, multiple functions here control how and what relations are found. And we have the options drop down, uh, as you can see here, which more toggles um, for relations can be found. Um, and if we look down here at this toolbar, you may recognize some of this symbology here. Uh, this is the make toolbar. And this is where we have all of our constraints now. Um, the pre-existing dialog box for constraint, um, you know, the C key no longer activates uh, your geometric constraints. Um, it's now found here in the make toolbar. Um, and uh, we'll see moving forward, actually, uh, in this sketch where it's really difficult to over constrain something, um, which, which is really nice. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and start sketching here. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm just going to go ahead and create a random circle and then create another one in space here like so. Um, and so one thing, um, your uh, sketch, if your sketch is brown, uh, like the boundaries of these curves here, then that means it is a movable curve. Uh, it has not been constrained in any way. Uh, you can move it wherever you want. Um, you know, you, you can even click on it to bring up that dimension there and, and move that dimension around as well. Um, So also, if the curve is closed, you can see it gets shaded a particular color. Uh, there's some overlapping shading as well right there. Um, so you just get some of that visual feedback. Um, so now, uh, one thing I've found uh, that the sketcher works best is by selecting what it is that I want to work with first and then applying uh, a given dimension or constraints to it. Now, uh, you could go ahead and um, bring up the dialog box for any one of these constraints here, um, like so. But um, I find it, it really works best when um, you click what it is you're trying to constrain first and then select the constraint afterwards. So let's say I want to horizontally align these two uh, circles by their midpoints. Um, so I can just click the uh, arc center of this circle on the left here and the arc center of this circle on the right here. Um, as you can see, uh, when you interact with something, uh, dimension, approximate dimensions will pop up, um, it, you know, in case that's what it is you're trying to do. But in this case, we're doing a, uh, a uh, constraint so I just go ahead and I have those two arc centers selected and I just click make horizontal. And uh, now you can see these two are aligned. Um, now, if I was to do this by coming up and clicking the constraint first, um, you can see it's the same uh, process, but now you can see what your motion curve or stationary curve is. And you can see the one I, cl I click first does matter. Uh, because that will be the the motion curve. So if you just want some extra understanding of um, how your constraints are being applied, you can go ahead and come up to the make toolbar and click your constraint first. But um, I find it 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 works really well. Also, if you just click whatever it is you're trying to constrain first, and then click the constraint after. Um, now, for example, uh, let's say. I want to make these two circles uh, equal. I want to make create a profile of some sort. So I create 
draw one line from that circle there to the other and one line like that. Um, so I wanna make these two circles equal. So what I would do, I would just click the boundary of one circle, the boundary of the other, and just come up here and hit my make equal constraint. And as you can see now, they are both equal. Um, let's do another one. Now, maybe I wanna put the, uh, I wanna line the center of these circles onto the horizontal axis. Um, so maybe a coincident or um, the equivalent of a point on curve uh, uh, command or constraint. Um, so I'm gonna select the midpoint of either circle, the arc center, and then select the curve it is I'm trying to attach to. So in this case, it's the horizontal. And then I hit my make coincident. And you can see that that attaches right on there. The, so so that does the equivalent of a point on curve. Um, now I want say I want to make the, these two a symmetric distance uh, about a, a particular uh, object. So I want to make the uh, distance between these two cent, uh, symmetric about the vertical axis. Um, so uh, again, I could come up here and uh, hit my make symmetric um, constraint and work through it there or you can kind of just intuitively go about it. So let's say I want the center of this circle here and the center of this circle here, I click both of those two and then I click my axis. I can now come up here and click make symmetric and uh, we now have that constraint applied there. Um, now just getting into dimensioning, um, again, it's the same sort of workflow. You just click whatever it is you're trying to dimension and that approximate dimension will come up and um, you can apply it. So um, let's say I wanna measure the distance between these two circles. I can just select the center of one circle, select the center of the other circle, and it knows that that's the approximate dimension that comes up that I want to uh, affect. So I can just uh, pick a nice uh, round number here, let's say 400 and hit enter. And um, now you'll always get this message um, when you're creating your first dimension in the new sketcher. Uh, it'll just ask you if you want to scale the whole sketch relative to that first change that you made. Um, if you're coming from older versions of, that, of NX, you're probably used to that. It, it'll always do that. But I guess, uh, at least in this one, it, it asks you in case that's not your intent. Um, so we have that. Now we have these two circles um, to be equal to one another. So let's say I want to uh, uh, create uh, some sort of diameter. Um, so I just click one of these circles boundaries and you can see again, the approximate dimension for the diameter comes up and I can just double click that and click whatever number it is that I want. Let's type in 110. And you see now because they are equal, uh, it applies to both and the sketch is fully defined. So now once you see the sketch turns black, uh, that's how you know uh, the sketch is fully uh, defined. And that being said, uh, we saw earlier that a movable curve was brown. Um, now a fully defined sketch uh, turns black. If you have any um, color coding preferences, you can edit those yourself by uh, going over here to menu, um, preferences and sketch. And there's all kinds of sketch settings in here, um, but something that's often utilized are um, customizing how everything is color coded here. So you can play around with that as well. Um, now, before we exit this particular sketch, so. Uh, what would happen in the other sketcher if I was to say put a different diameter on this circle on the left here? Um, it would probably give you an error. In the other sketcher, would say, "Hey, you're you're over constrained in some way, and you have to fix it." Um, but let's see what happens here. So this is 110, right? So let's say I go ahead and I make that 150. Um, you can see in, in this sketcher, it doesn't really do that. It kind of it just it pops off uh, these lines here without an issue. And um, 
That's because in this sketch where it's a little bit more relaxed, you don't really have to worry about over constraining certain things anymore. Um, it'll NX will sort of adjust in real time to your latest command. Um, so as you recall, I, I made these two equal, uh, but if I enter a dimension that could possibly break them, um, then it'll do that because it, it thinks you're telling NX that that was something that was possibly intentional and it'll in real time try to figure out what it is that you're trying to achieve. And um, that's one thing about this sketcher that's really new. It just kind of uh, on the fly is trying to work with you, uh, not against you. So we can go ahead and undo that. Um, and uh, let's say also uh, I want to break from this center dimension here. Uh, in the old sketcher, you would just, of course, you know, have to break it yourself, go ahead and delete it. Um, and then you can move either of these circles out at will. Uh, but in the new sketcher, um, you can still do that. Or um, you can also uh, shake a curve that it, you're trying to move. And it, it breaks out of place from its constraints and relations. Um, and you can see the new sketcher shows us here in pink uh, what it is that you are breaking. And again, you can go ahead and uh, adjust those color code settings if you like. Um, so let's just finish this and apply a quick extrude. All right, that's an all right thickness there. Um, so we're going to create a, another sketch on top of the extruded face. So you can just select that face there. And um, now this time before I uh, go into the sketch, I, because we have a pre-existing object, I can go ahead and play around with these orientation settings. So again, um, if I want to adjust my origin points, uh, I can just select that option and click any, any points within the geometry that I want to place it. So I can go to that arc center there. I can uh, say, let's say, click this point here. Um, or for my case, I just want to go back to the original coordinate system. Uh, you can also select your horizontal reference. What do you want? The, what you want your horizontal to be? Um, you can make it go along a previously defined axis, or I could go along uh, an existing line in the part like that. Uh, say it's going the wrong direction, I can reverse that, and uh, now it's it's where I want it to be. So I can just go ahead and start this sketch. And uh, so I'm just going to put another circle uh, on top of here. And uh, so here's what I want to do. I, I want to dimension it off of this farthest existing edge. Um, and so you may wonder, you know, it's showing that I can't select that. So uh, how can we do that? Um, well, uh, you can actually, um, you know, some people think, you know, you have to go um, include, uh, but you can actually just go up here in your selection settings and change it from within your active sketch uh, to the entire assembly. And now you can see all of those previous curves are still accessible. Um, and let's say I want to dimension it um, now. Uh, and if you really are adamant about using the older dimensioning tool, you can see um, I still have that up here. It's something that you can bring up in your solve group options. It's uh, this dimension drop down. So you can still bring that up uh, if you choose to. And it has all your um, previous old rapid dimensioning tools. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and um, try it the uh, newer way. So again, I want to distance the center of this circle off this farthest edge. So I just click what it is I'm working with. That's the center of this circle and this far edge here. And now it brings up every approximate dimension it thinks I may want. Um, so I want this. So let's put in a nice round number there, 180. Um, now let's say um, I want to do, I want to constrain all this. So now next I just need to do a diameter for this circle. So I, all I do is just click that diameter and it knows what I want. And let's make that 55. Um, now I have a diameter of the circle and I have a, a distance dimension, but um, it's still free to move. So let's say I want to constrain this to that horizontal. Uh, so again, just click whatever it is you're trying to work with and um, 
you know, click the constraint and NX will intuitively know what it is you're trying to do. So that's the center of this circle, uh, this horizontal axis, and there. It, it already blocks out every other constraint that can no longer be an option based on what you clicked. Uh, it, it now knows based on those two clicks, uh, make coincidence your only constraint option, uh, which is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and cl uh, click that there. Um, now, um, I mentioned that there were some relax functions also in the new solve group here. So yeah, if on the fly, um, if you just want to move anything around that's uh, constrained either uh, via dimension or a um, one of these um, uh, options from the make toolbar here, you can relax those. So let's say I want to relax this distance here. I just go ahead and say relax dimensions and I can now move that circle uh, regardless of the uh, dimension constraint. Um, same thing, uh, let's say I want to move it off of this horizontal, I can say relax relations and now it's free to move off the horizontal. I can even on top of that add the relaxed dimensions and um, now it's free to move in any way um, that it wants. Um, so, you know, now this is just a little bit of the basics uh, of the new sketcher. A lot of the things that you're used to, like I said, they, they still work just like you expect them to. Um, all these commands up here, uh, you know, mirror, offset, uh, et cetera. Uh, but, and a lot of these constraints also work the same exact way. Um, it's just the the user interface of them is a little bit more um, refined. Um, something else also, if you didn't know, uh, you can update some of your settings here uh, that affect your sketching environment, um, both in modeling and drafting. Uh, if you go up to File, uh, Utilities, Customer Defaults, um, if I go to Gateway here, you can select your default units here. So I'm in um, inches right now and um, everything else will follow. When you create a new part, that should be your default, uh, whatever you've set here. Um, you can also come down here and, and uh, change your standards. So um, your drafting standard, I'm in ISO right now, but you have all these different options here, um, you know, it, however you want uh, your drafting and your sketches to come out and be displayed and your units and all that, you, you can change that standard here. And uh, when you change your customer defaults, you just have to restart your NX session and um, it will take effect. So just coming back here, uh, just some of those um, big takeaways. Um, Overall, the sketcher, we saw it, it continually, continuously evaluates the sketch as you go. It, it allows your constraints to adapt and sort of prioritize dimensions. Um, it lets you bypass or relax constraints uh, when needed with, uh, with just a click. Um, and it, elim it really eliminates the excessive dependence on adding relations. Um, it, it speeds up the process of um, editing and refining um, uh, imported data, um, you know, sketching and dimensioning. Uh, you also get that visual feedback. Um, as you saw, you get shaded profiles of closed curves or layered shaded profiles, um, you know, sh something that's movable or fully constrained um, will appear differently uh, visually. Um, it reveals found relations and uh, approximation when dimensioning. Um, you can preview dimensions uh, displayed when selecting any line or curve. Um, you know, you're able to toggle between uh, a reference or fixed dimension very quickly, um, simply by right-clicking on, on the curve. Um, and uh, also, yeah, you can easily relax relations without having to remove them. Um, and so it just, it makes it a very user-friendly process. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.